Hmm. Okay. I need this. Um, let's just get rid of that. And how much antimatter do we need? Like each one of these needs one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 24 of the FTB stuff. FTB antimatter 24x. Okay. And then of course these things need three of the antimatter pallets each. So that would be nine plus what else? Oh, that's an extra one of those. 25. So far, 10 mech antimatter. We need 10. Oh, that's 11. What about any of this? No. Oh, there's another one of that. 11 and 26. Hmm. I guess that's it. Mechanism. For now, I think so. So we need this FTB antimatter as well as mechanism antimatter. Oh boy. Hello everyone. Welcome back to all the mods eight. And I think it's time to start working towards antimatter of both varieties because they're going to be very important. And I feel like they're going to take a fair bit of time to sort out. Now in the last episode, we were doing a few things and uh, starting to work out these FTB contraptions. But if I'm going to be making, what is it, an antimatter constructor, my God, I'm going to have to set up some different kinds of power using those FTB contraptions. And a few people in the comments did say to use the solar generators, these ones here. Hmm. Okay, let's chuck those over there and also give ourselves uh, a look at these cables too. We'll start with the FTB antimatter. Oh boy. Well, we're not gonna be doing this uh, highest end one just yet, especially if it requires that, but we might be able to go through and set out a couple of these. So what do they take to make a few things? Coal dust needs to be put through a macerator. Oh my. There are other ways we can do that. We can crush it. Okay, okay. Silicon, we can make. A generator is also makeable. And then we need, oh my God, we need so much stuff. Now, somebody did say that I can make cured rubber by cooking slime. Let's just test that theory. In fact, uses. Yeah, it cooks straight down into cured rubber. Man, I wish I knew that earlier. So instead of having to go through that whole process that we did in the last episode, I could just grab this stuff, make more if I wanted to, and just, there we go. <laughs> we now have 1.4K rubber. God, that's so much easier. Thanks. Wait. We got this. Thank us. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> okay, so that rubber is usable in a bunch of uh, things, specifically making stuff like that. Yeah, makes it a little bit easier to make those LV cables, which means we can make a bunch more of these quite easily. Oh, perfect. If we grab some coal like this and then go to mechanism, I'm sure I have a crushing factory here that still has some power. <laughs> Not enough. We can make ourselves more than enough of this coal dust. And let's just say we want to craft up a thousand silicon. Yeah, done. Our first solar panel sorted. But this only provides one of the uh, power per tick. So we're going to upgrade it. And I'm going to need to make a bunch more. Energize crystal. Yeah, I got some work to do. We need to almost probably go through and set up crafting recipes for this stuff. I might do that and see if I can go through making... Yeah, this stuff is all stuff that I should have available. I can make those pretty easily. And then this one just needs to go through that process. Okay. I'm going to try and make myself a handful of these HV ones. Yeah. Hmm. Ah, I need more rubber. I just need to remove the old rubber crafting. This one. Six advanced circuits. Okay. And we craft those up, which should be done. Nice. I managed to make three. I don't think I can get another one very quickly, but 
three should do for now. Now, since these are solar panels, we probably want to make it daytime. And I think we're going to make this antimatter up here so that it has access to the sun. So if I put those down there, they should... Yeah, lovely. They generate heaps of power. Now, I can make myself a uh, cables and stuff. But I do need to go through those ones too. And then how do we make this antimatter constructor? Oh, cool. I already worked out how to do those things, so I can get those uh, advanced machine blocks done as well. Nice. So if I want to make something like these HV cables... Oh, that's super cheap. In fact, I can just make that right now. Will these work? They should do. If I go through and just make myself a handful of these... There's my carbon fibre. Ah, and here's some I made earlier. A pair of those. Do I have auto crafting for these things? Let's just make 20. So I can make these advanced ones. And then I need an iridium, which needs graphene. Oh, I need more compressed coal. But all that should require is a little bit of compressing up here. In this one's place. And we should be able to make this antimatter. Cool. Graphene, iridium circuit, and an antimatter constructor. Nice. Now, if I put these cables like this, okay, do I need to put something into it to make antimatter? How does this work? Used. To, okay. Oh, it made one. Oh, so it just needs to fill up with uh, with 100,000 to make a single piece. That's not as difficult as I was expecting. Good. <laughs> That's great. Oh, this will uh, make us more than enough. Hopefully nothing bad happens from this stuff. Nice. Very nice. Well, that's one of my antimatter things pretty much sorted. It'll make 26 of those in no time flat. I guess uh, the real antimatter problem is the mechanism stuff. So while this works, and this should be within some loaded bounds, it is, I'm going to leave it to do its thing. And we're going to head over here. How's this been going? Ooh, nearly a trillion. Nice. So I guess I have to bite the bullet and go through this process. Where do I start? <laughs> Here? Or is that the starting? So I guess we need to make ourselves... Yeah, okay. To start our journey into the world of mechanism reactors, we'll start by making a fission reactor. These are multi-block structures that generate massive amounts of heat by burning fissile fuels. This reactor does not produce power on its own, but the heat generated can be used to heat coolant to be used to generate power in an industrial turbine. The fission reactor can be very dangerous as a meltdown can cause an explosion as well as radiation spreading over five chunk radius, which lasts for several in-game weeks, oh boy. But we're gonna be prepared for that, let's make a hazmat suit. I'm wondering if this power that it is talking about generating is necessary. It might be, because we need to make plutonium and then convert that Plutonium? Yeah, I think we're going to have to do it. Okay, let's uh, let's gain some distance from this. Haha, <laughs> I don't want to irradiate my normal power. What did it say? About five chunks radius? I think this will do just nicely. Yeah, we'll start in here. In fact, why don't I just mark the corners of the chunk that I'm going to build in? Yeah, and I want to build further this way if required. So, a hazmat suit. What do I need for this? I can probably do most of it, right? I need some orange dye, which is fine. Just wearing lead? <laughs> Here we go. Hazmat. <laughs> nice. That takes us through this process. Next on the list is getting our building basics. We need 53 fission reactor casings and... 41 reactor glass. 41 of these requires enriched iron. Hmm. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even see the ghost. It still startled me. If we go over into here, we can grab our infusing, our enriching, purifying, and we should probably go back to our base and just grab the, uh, the crusher as well, just in case we need it. You. Thank you. And we'll set this up in the center. 
just get all of our factories up and running. If we want to make this glass, we need enriched iron, which was carbon and iron ingots. A few iron ingots are done, and a few pieces of coal enriching. Wait, was it enriched? In a metallurgic infuser. Ah, uh, infusing. This one. Let's put all those in there. Oh, dump the redstone. Put that in, and... Hmm. Ultimate universal, 3 million per tick. That'll do just nicely. Nice. That works perfectly. You are a problem. Stop it. So, a few pieces of that. I needed 41, was it? Well, yeah, we'll make 44. And the reactor casing needs a bunch of these. And we need some glass. A little bit of osmium. And how many did we need of this? 53. Perfect. Nice. That is done. Ooh, basic induction. Cool. So, it's time to gather the materials we need to build the reactor. Just like most mechanism multi-blocks, reactors can be custom-sized depending on your needs. They must be a cuboid with a minimum outside size being 3 wide, 4 tall, and 3 blocks deep. The maximum size is 18 by 18 by 18. We're going to build a 5 by 5 to start with. The edges of the outer shell must be made out of fission reactor casings, while the faces can be either casings or reactor glass, reactor ports or reactor logic adapters. We'll get to those later. For now, let's build the basic 5x5x5 reactor. You, <laughs> stop with that noise. Need more help building? Holding W while hovering over the fission reactor casing will show you the ponder that helps build it. Oh, nice. Edges must be casing. These ones can be the glass, and of course, it works like normal. Placing fuel assembly blocks inside to make the fuel. Fuel at the top of each rod. Essentially what we've done with uh, this stuff over here already. Okay, so we're going to go one, two, oh, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five. Bring that up. One, two, three, four, like that. And then we use this glass to fill in the rest. Why do I not have enough? <laughs> didn't it say I made the 41? Maybe I didn't make this right. That's right. We can make one more of these. Is that the multi-block? I guess we'll find out. So, next we need to make a couple of different things. Optional, because we've all blown up a reactor before. Okay, we're going to go through from the top. Inside the reactor. The inside of the reactor is built up of pillars using several fission fuel assembly blocks with a single control rod assembly placed at the top of each pillar. These can be placed anywhere from 1 to 15 blocks in height depending on the size of the reactor. For this build, we'll put two of the fission fuel assemblers or assemblies in the center of our multi-block and then put a control rod assembly right on top. Cool. We need a basic chemical tank or two and I can make those, right? Yeah. A control rod. Stop it. So, down in here. Nope, not like that. This is working well. We want to place one, two, and one of those. I guess. Yeah. And then put that on top. Okay, now we're talking. It did the little particles. <laughs> Steel block. Thanks. Next, we need to be able to interact with it. So. We need four ports, a coolant input and output, fissile fuel output, and a waste output. Ports, one on the back, makes sense to me. We need four of those. The reactor casings, I can make a handful more, I've got plenty actually. And I'm just going to have to uh, craft those up, luckily I'd prepared some earlier. Cool. That gives us the four that we need for there, and we get, it looks like one spare. One, two. Three and four. Kind of feel like I should have built this a little bit further over so that I have room and it's not going into a secondary one of those. Uh, but I can always load the two. It's fine. On top of that, once you finish placing in all the required blocks to build the reactor, it should give off red particles to show it is complete. Yeah. Right clicking anywhere on the reactor will open up the interface. This will have all of the information you need to run the reactor properly, as well as two buttons to turn on and off the reactor. On the left, you have two tanks, one for coolant and one for fizzle fuel. 
On the right, you have one for nuclear waste and one for heated coolant, which will most likely be steam. The temperature bar will show you how hot the reactor is. After a certain temperature, it will start taking damage, which will eventually cause it to explode. To adjust the burn rate of the fissile fuel and see more statistics, click on the I tab on the left side. Here you can adjust the rate limit, which controls how much fuel the reactor burns per tick. So right clicking on here, our temperature is quite even, but we need to go through and, uh, and start adding in some different bits and pieces. Now, I think I would like to make this fail safe. Logic adapters allow redstone control for reactors. Right click to open configuration settings. With two, you can set up a fail safe that can shut off the reactor under certain conditions. Set this one to activation and this one to damage critical. Oh, when the reactor has a critical damage, it will give off a redstone signal and you can use it to activate a piston with gravel or sand on it to activate an observer. This is an observer facing towards the gravel. The gravel will activate it and turn off the reactor. Okay, cool. So you can set up like a fail safe so that if it uh, hits critical mass, the redstone activates, shutting it down. Good to know. What else do we have along here? Well, I suppose I can make two of these. There we go. And <laughs> I've never made an observer. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, I do. I've got some. Nice. I've just not put it in my inventory, I suppose. Yeah, basically exactly what we just saw in the, uh, the ponder. So that setup will stop it from uh, overloading. Cool. Might actually set that up here straight away, just off to the side. We'll put that there. How did it say? Redstone thing, gravel, blah, blah, blah. Cool. Redstone, piston, gravel, and an observer. No, other way. Yeah. Now, I probably should have tried to activate that first. What did it say the bottom one needed to be set as? Uh, right click configuration. With two, you can set up a fail safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one to activation and this one to damage critical. Okay. Damage critical. And then this one to activation. Okay. Nice. We're getting there. I think we can take those and more fish and stuff. Now, cooling our reactor down here, high quality H2O does say to use a sink. When burning fuel, the fission reactor creates a massive amount of heat to prevent the reactor from converting into TNT. We need to make sure it's properly cooled. The easiest way to do this is by giving the reactor water from a sink. The sink is an infinite water source, which is really nice for a situation like this. Pump out water into one of the reactor's ports. This is set to input to fill up the reactor with water. This will be heated while the reactor is running and get converted to steam, which you can be used to create power with an industrial turbine. Sodium can also be used as a much more efficient coolant. This allows for higher burn rates and lower core temperatures. Oh, is that worth looking into? Because I'm pretty sure I've made sodium before, right? Let's see. Mechanism sodium. Yeah, you make brine and you separate it into chlorine and sodium. I have an electrolytic separator. I'm pretty sure. One of these, right? Yep. I have the stuff that I would need to uh, make a little thing of brine. Hmm. Maybe I'll try and set up some tanks here and do that. Yeah. Okay. A little bit of fiddling around and I do have this running at a pretty, uh, pretty high level, making a bunch of brine. And if you can see here, I have a bunch of liquid sodium, which is what I believe is needed to cool this, but it's not going into the coolant tank. Now, I'm wondering if this is just, uh, if it needs pure sodium? Hmm. Because there's liquid sodium and there's sodium, and the liquid sodium doesn't have the cooling efficiency. So I'm thinking maybe I've, uh, maybe I've made a mistake here using the condensator to, uh, turn that into liquid stuff. And instead, perhaps it just needs to come straight out of there. How can I flush this? Uh, where are you this time? Haha, <laughs> hidden. So if I just break this instead, <laughs> I've generated so much liquid sodium that I probably didn't need. And instead just come straight out of the side of here, like this. Sodium out the left, fluids, or is it a gas? Hmm, not enough room for output. Hmm, maybe it's because it's a gas. Because these cables can handle fluids. That one handles power. That one handles heat. 
Ah, this one handles the gases. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, look, there we go. Sodium pouring in. So, I, uh, I made it too complicated. <laughs> I didn't actually need to go that far. All I needed was this electrolytic separator to separate brine being made from this into chlorine and sodium. And now, uh, we're filling that up. Nice and quick. Okay, so this machine, uh, I can uninstall a bunch of things. And I'm going to put that in there and see whether it makes any difference. But hopefully that's a decent amount. I'm not exactly sure how much it's making. That's a good start though. Nice. In fact, I can, uh, <laughs> I can do this differently now that I don't have two machines. There you go. So if that's the case there, we have our coolant going in nice and quick. I don't know how much this can store because it doesn't look like I can see anything at the moment there, but that's fine. We want to move on now to the next layer which is going through and making ourselves fissile fuel. So the fission reactor needs fissile fuel to run. If you look up fissile fuel right now in JEI, I bet you'll get overwhelmed with everything you need to make. It's okay, you've got this. Let's take it one step at a time. It all boils down to creating uranium hexafluoride. To do this, let's focus on making these two gases, hydrofluoric acid and uranium oxide. Why do I feel like a scientist doing this? It's ridiculous. <laughs> so... First, a quick recap on sulfuric acid. You should have already made sulfuric acid for your tier 4 ore processing, which we didn't do, but that's fine. But here's a reminder on how to get it. Start by getting sulfur dust, either by crushing sulfur from thermal, or by mixing hydrogen chloride with gunpowder. Okay, we might be able to do the sulfur dust from thermal. Take the sulfur dust and run it through a chemical oxidizer to get sulfur dioxide. Combine with oxygen in a chemical infuser to get sulfur trioxide. Next, we'll combine with water vapor to get sulfuric acid. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's think about this. We have a crusher. Yeah. Oh, it's got some extra stuff in it. It said we can get it by crushing sulfur from thermal, which we have a decent amount of. So if I, mm, let's just take this. I'll bring it over to uh, where we have a little bit of access to our stuff. Actually, no, we're gonna go all the way home. I'm gonna do this at home. Let's just jump in the back here and we'll put that down. So if I want an exporter, creative exporter, let's make one of those and an importer. We'll also make a creative one of those. We want the exporter going in here and we'll export sulfur like so. Uh, we want input from the top transport top. Mm, nope. How can we make this work? Oh, can I not crush this using that? Doesn't look like it. Interesting. Very interesting. A thermal series pulverizer will do it. Okay, that's something else. Can we do something cheeky and get ourselves some sulfur dust from this? If I grab some gunpowder, which I have 43,000 of. No, what was it that went in there? Was it dye? Let's just take some yellow dye. Yeah, I can make sulfur dust from that. Okay. Do I have to manually do it though? I wonder if we can set this up to automate it. If not, this is uh, not going to be great. If we import, nah, it's not going to work, is it? So it's either set up ourselves with a thermal series crusher or whatever recipe through machine that's use through a pulverizer okay pulverizer we can probably make okay if we provide that with some power nice why is that loading so slowly this should be able to output way faster than that i had to put that in manually why will that not import okay maybe i've got it back the front again <laughs> exporter on here put that in there why <laughs> there we go the top can now take stuff in and then we're going to go the back no we'll go output from there like so right and now we should see sulfur sulfur dust ah yeah okay so it obviously is from thermal series but it works the same you can do sulfur essence. Interesting. Very interesting. If I was to do this again, I'd probably try and make that. 
a little earlier. Now, augmentations, if this is thermal series, I'm sure there is stuff that speeds it up, right? Capacity, what I'm after is not tank capacities, but like producing very fast processing, reduces processing speed. Where's one that increases processing speed? Hmm, I do not know how to use thermal series. Type dynamo. Augmentation, what is this? <laughs> what type is it? I should look into this further. Hmm, I wonder. Oh yeah, that's, uh, that's doing a thing. But it's using power faster than I can uh, make it. <laughs> oh, okay, but that works. Let's have a look. It doesn't make a bunch though. <laughs> Oh boy. I do have some sulfur dust though. I can make that one from mechanism pretty easily. It just takes a little bit of manual work. It might technically be faster though. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, stop it. So with the sulfur, you run it through a chemical oxidizer to get sulfur dioxide. Hmm. Mm hmm. Chemical infuser, chemical oxidizer. Let's just leave that to do its thing. And we'll take this alchemy table with us. God, I'm slow with this hazmat suit on. The chemical oxidizer can take this, oh yeah, and it'll make sulfur dioxide, so it just needs some power. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, stop it. <laughs> We're going to put that down there. Maybe put it here. We've got some speed upgrades, which we can throw in there, and that will happen nice and fast. And the sulfur dioxide gets turned into what? Combined with oxygen in a chemical infuser. So, chemical infuser. Let's go about this a smart way. Give it power there. Chemical infuser, we'll get it from that. It's not the most efficient way to go about it, but it's fine. Ah, uh, no. Hmm. Auto eject is on. <laughs> I'll work it out, I swear. Okay. It just turned out this was uh, needing to go on the back side of this machine. So now I have the sulfur dioxide into my chemical infuser and I need water vapor from that. I believe to go in here too. So this rotary condensator is receiving water. If I take that off of there, I used a dropper to clear it out. And then I grab the universal cable, put that here with power on top of that. That's back up and running. This is now generating water vapor, but it's not enough energy to run at maximum speed. So I probably want to make some energy upgrades, make eight of those, and this will really start cranking there we go so water vapor is probably a gas i would assume so i need the pressurized tube here capable of handling gases lovely that's gonna come across here like so M maybe <laughs> filling up with water vapor yeah 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 but that water vapor hmm Sulfur dust into a chemical oxidizer will create sulfur dioxide. Now we need to create trioxide. Send the sulfur dioxide into a chemical infuser, combine it with oxygen to create the trioxide, and then send the trioxide to another chemical infuser to combine it with water vapor to create sulfur, sulfuric acid. So the sulfur dioxide needs to be uh, added with oxygen. Oh boy. We're getting there though. Okay, a little reorganizing and I've made a second electrolytic separator here. Now, there's different points. I wanna get some water over into that. And then what I should be able to do is use that to make myself oxygen. So electrolytic separator using water will make hydrogen and oxygen and we can just dump the extra hydrogen. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can get this maybe up here. And if we do that, what's the flow rate on these like? I might just separate that so that uh, that gets its own form of stuff going in there. And it looks like that's already doing stuff. I'm going to dump excess and then the oxygen is going to come out this side maybe. Now that oxygen is a gas. So can I bring that maybe out this side? Hydrogen's going into that. Ah, this is in the way. Hmm, output one. I want output two to be over there and output one to be there. Then that way, if I put this here, it's empty. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> I'm getting the right idea though. I think the water maybe wants to go into the front. So if I rotate that, 
then put that there. Or maybe we rotate it one more time and try and get it out this side. More power. Dumping excess, oxygen is going through there. Mm. Air, output one, no. <laughs> it's confusing. Ah, there we go. I've worked it out. Managed to get the gases to output oxygen two to the front. And I've added some speed upgrades so you can see this is absolutely flowing. And so I just need oxygen to come down into the side of here, right? Yeah. Oxygen in there, we're making sulfur trioxide. Nice. Now the sulfur trioxide needs to be combined in another chemical infuser, right? Chemical infuser. Let's make another one of these. Shouldn't be too hard to do. There we go. And this is what, if I shift, I've worked out the best way to look at this is by shifting and looking at the, uh, the machine. You can see whether it is a gas or a liquid. So the sulfur trioxide is a gas, meaning that I put it into here using that. So we have sulfur trioxide going into there. And then this one needs the water vapor, which is also a gas. And this should make sulfuric acid. It does. Now that's going to need some power. That's fine. I should be able to just grab the universal cable here over the top. There we go. We could make some speed upgrades for this one, like so. And we probably need some energy upgrades since it's going too fast. So energy upgrades like so. Yeah, super fast. If we add some speed upgrades to this one, like so, now that should be providing a decent amount and we're making a bunch of sulfuric acid. Okay. We can probably clean this up ever so slightly, like so. Let's do that. Oxygen, what is happening over here? Oh, now we need to feed into this chemical oxidizer. Okay, let's do something here. We can change this up ever so slightly. So, instead, what I will do is grab this, and we're going to put that down there, and we're going to bring water across into the side of it. And then we need a, hmm. well, for starters, we can just put this in here. That's fine. And that's going to make us plenty of this. I think I might have this turned around. There we go. No. Water vapor is a gas. Will it not pass directly across? Water, gases, output, left. Hmm. That's right. We can uh, get past that little issue by just setting this up in this way and using the ones of these should be the way that it goes. Hmm. Have I got this the wrong way around? How do I keep breaking things? <laughs> that was the problem. I needed to uh, toggle the operation. Silly. So now gases output. There we go. Perfect. Done. Now we're full on sulfuric acid, sulfur trioxide, again can just be made bit by bit uh, we can probably we have room in here to set ourselves up with a little rs system to automatically transfer that across but for now with that the next thing on the list i believe sulfuric acid observe sulfuric acid in a machine i'm observing it <laughs> the next thing on the list hydrofluoric Let's take out sulfuric acid and combine it with fluorite in a chemical dissolution chamber to make hydrofluoric acid. Chemical dissolution chamber. Okay. We want to shut this off. Don't want that connected. So sulfuric acid is also a gas. Uh, that's filled with sulfuric acid. We probably need to rotate this, I guess. Yep. There we go. Sulfuric acid is done. Why is this not working now? Good Lord. Ah, needs more stuff in here. There we go. That should be making some more sulfuric acid, which is doing that and filling up this pipe. Okay, okay. <laughs> and combined with what was it? Fluorite, not flour. This stuff, fluorite. I have heaps. Okay, once again, this probably needs a bunch of speed upgrades. Like so. Perfect. 
hydrofluoric acid. This is so far beyond vanilla, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Look at this little setup here. What the hell? <laughs> so, we need to automate putting some uh, sulfur dust into there and then fluorite into here. But we now need to make some uranium hexafluoride. <laughs> but the way to make the uranium cake stuff is pretty easy. Just uranium ingots into an enrichment chamber. Now, I'm sure we have an enrichment factory here, right? Yeah. So, uranium. We need to go grab some from over here. Yeah, we got 46,000. So, if we put that in here... It enriches it into yellow cake uranium. Is this going to irradiate me? Create some cake that must not be eaten. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's going to irradiate me. That's good. So with this yellow cake uranium, we can send it through a chemical oxidizer to create the gas uranium oxide. Okay. 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 Oh my God. I hope you're hanging with me here, folks. This is ridiculous. Chemical oxidizer another one of these need a chemical tank and a personal chest okay so a chemical oxidizer uh how do i want to do this like this put that in there and it's going to turn that into uranium oxide okay then we want to take this sulfuric acid no we need hydro yeah the hydrofluoric acid <laughs> And combine it in a chemical infuser. Infuser. <laughs> this is ridiculous. One, two. Okay. So this has some uranium oxide and this has the hydrofluoric. They're both gases. And we're going to bring them back over here. Need a little bit of uh, power coming across to this and to this. Wait, I need some more space. Uh, we'll put that here. Oh boy. And this comes out like this. We have the hydrofluoric acid. And this is not going to work. We need to disengage those. This now has... Oh, that needs to be rotated. Come on. We can do this. How do I... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making uranium hexafluoride. Oh my god. Okay. So, uranium hexafluoride... Once we have an isotopic centrifuge, we can run our uranium hexafluoride and create fissile fuel. Oh my god. What was that called? A. Isotopic centrifuge. Isotopic centrifuge. Okay. We can create two of those. We just need a basic chemical tank. And with this, we rotate it that way. And the gas coming out of here combined with the power oh does it even need power it does need power how does the power get in there through the top maybe hmm how do you get power <laughs> not enough energy we've got some fizzle fuel there though there's only one input unless it's on the bottom maybe it's the bottom there yeah okay so uh oh shush with this we want to Put it on top of here, rotate it that way, and then bring up our uranium hexafluoride. Like so. That's going down. Why is that not going in there? Uranium hexafluoride uh, gases input from the front. There we go. Where's the output? How do I get the fissile fuels out? Well, <laughs> okay. What does this say? See, that wasn't so bad. I mean, it was. <laughs> Look at this mess here. I need to make sure that I feed this with the stuff that it needs. This needs some stuff as well. But we are making fizzle fuels. <sighs> okay. I, I think we're going to have to continue in the next episode. This is very, very complicated stuff. And this may not be the most efficient way to do it, but it's working. I have fizzle fuels now, and I have a coolant that is going into here. So I'm thinking we're getting close to be able to start making nuclear waste and all of the stuff that we need towards antimatter. 
but it's just going to take too long and we've run out of episode time. So I'm going to say thank you very much for bearing with me and making it this far through the episode if you have already. And I appreciate you guys hanging out for me. Tried to work my way through all of this complicated stuff for the first time ever. This is done without watching tutorials or anything like that, just following what we have available in here. So I'm pretty proud of myself for actually getting to the point where I have this done. In the next episode, we'll try and get this up and running and maybe start producing ourselves what we need for antimatter. But for now, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support. You folks are amazing. And to everyone who's been watching the series, I feel like we are slowly getting there. And uh, once we get this big hump out of the way, we're going to get closer and closer to our ATM star very, very soon. So until such time as I see you again, likely in the next episode, I hope you take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, whoop!